I don't know what's going on outside. There's like a plane or something that's hovering. Don't even, what's going on right here? <laughs> I had a moment three days ago. I got bored and my roots were like all grown in. They were like out to here, all right here, as you can tell, because I have hot roots. And uh, I decided to go try to be a redhead and I dyed my hair. It was like a copper. It was, it was literally the color of a penny. And um, I instantly hated it. And so then I had to buy a color remover and I, I stripped out all the red, but then I was left behind with like this, um, it was like a dark blonde slash yellow tone. Every time I make a vlog, my kids start yelling, my husband start yelling in the background. Every single time. It's so annoying. Anyways, um, and then it also left hot roots, so I end up messaging my, um, my hair person that I go to. She's like, girl, don't touch your hair anymore until I see you again. So I see her on January 15th and, um, I also gave myself a chemical burn right here. It's not as bad today. It's actually pretty good today. It was really bad about two days ago. It was pussing and it was like, it, it was, I couldn't touch right here. It was like really sensitive. Now it's doing way better. I haven't touched my head in like three days with anything. Um, I ended up using coconut oil and I kind of just like massaged that spot and kind of focused on it. And then today, um, I came home from church and I was like, kind of thinking like maybe if I used my purple toner that it would help brighten my hair up a little bit. It did. Um, it did work, but it didn't help with the hot roots. So there's not much you can do about that. You got to bleach them out. So I am not using bleach right now. My hair needs a break. My scalp needs a break right now. So my hair is like wet right now. I'm just letting it air dry. Anyways, this is not what that video is going to be about. Let's see how many times we get interrupted. Um, this video, and I double checked my channel to look to see if I had this video already pre-recorded. I do not have it on this channel. I have already made a video talking about this about two years ago, but it was on my old channel and I think that got deleted as well as somebody hacked it and I'm no longer able to get into that channel anymore. But I know that I got a lot of good feedback when I made that video and a lot of girls were very appreciative of me making that video. I know it's still getting hits on it, but I wanted to make a video here for my subscribers that are here on this channel um, because I do have a lot of girls that watch me on here. So I wanted to talk about something that is just not well researched right now, but it is starting to come up on the up and coming. It's called post menstrual syndrome. Now we all know about pre-menstrual syndrome. We all know about PMS before our period starts. We kind of turn into psychopaths. Um, I've already talked about premenstrual dysphoria disorder on my channel. So we know about those two, but nobody really knows about the effects of post-menstrual dis disorder. Post means after. And so post-menstrual is when your period is over with and you are going through the symptoms of not having it anymore. Now, not every woman has this. Like I said, it's not well researched because not a lot of women have it. But the thing is, they're not really talking about it too much. So only right now, only 20 to 40% of women are um, reporting symptoms and the reporting, I'm trying to give myself some back support, the reporting symptoms of odd things happening to them after their period ends. So that's all they have right now. It's just like 20 to 40% of women talking about it. I'm the 20 to 40%. So I started to realize that I had postmenstrual disorder when I was about 30, I think I was about 35 years old. After my period ends, about one to two days, maybe three days after my period, I start to kind of have symptoms of PMS. I get really paranoid. I start to get really high anxiety. I get really weepy. I cry at everything. I literally just start crying for no reason. I can start crying at a action movie if it's a, like, it just, it starts to get to me in my mind. Um, I start to crave certain things. I start to really, really want things, um, that, and I get really thirsty. Um, I start to drink a lot of water and I start to drink a lot of tea. The other thing that I have is I have a lot of gut issues. I start to have a lot of diarrhea, gas, bloating, 
um, indigestion, acid reflux, heartburn. Um, I also start to have body aches and pains, joints, my back will start to hurt, my like certain joints in my body will start to hurt. Overall, overall weakness. Um, I have an overall weakness and fatigue. This usually will happen about 24 to 48 hours after my period ends. Now, it also depends on how strong of a period that you've had. Now, this last cycle that I just recently went through, it was really bad. I was three days late. And because I was three days late, my period wasn't that great. It started out kind of weak. It was actually really weak. And then all of a sudden when it hit, it hit. It was like a hurricane. It just hit. Um, it was very heavy and it kind of knocked me on my, knocked me off my feet. Um, I just, it drained me. I literally was dehydrated. I'm still a little dehydrated. Um, I had, I was at work Friday and I had to leave work early. I left work like two to three hours early because I was so fatigued and weak. I literally could not do my job. I couldn't do anything. I was like, my legs were weak. They were shaky. My hands were shaking. Um, and my period had been done. My period had been done for like a whole day. Um, these are symptoms that are not being talked about that much, but there are women out there that are having it. It lasts for me, I want to say probably about three or four days after my period ends and then I roll into my ovulation phase and then it kind of just starts to go away, but then ovulation brings up new things. Um, but the postmenstrual phase, I have to say probably for me is the worst. It's worse than my premenstrual phase. I would rather go through pre than post. Post for me is so hard to get through. I am so moody. I'm literally like all over the place. I can't think straight. Um, I am bitchy. I mean to my family members and my friends. Um, I don't make rational decisions. I'm very clumsy, very clumsy. I drop things, I'm breaking things, I'm losing things. I'm scattered brain, I'm foggy. I make really dumb, like I said, I make really dumb decisions. I don't, um, I'm not a logical thinker during my postmenstrual phase. I'm kind of just really all over the place. It's kind of just like that. I'm like really hyper. I've noticed that I get like a super boost of energy, but the reason why I get a super boost of energy is because my estrogen is starting to rise and it's starting to go back up, um, after my period because I'm in my follicular phase right now. And when that happens, and I've already talked about this in a previous video, Sometimes you can have great follicular phases. Sometimes you can have really shitty follicular phases. With me right now, I'm having a shitty one. There's too much going on right now in my life. And when that happens, it just causes me to get a lot of anxiety and depression. I start to get really sad. I cry a lot. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to talk to anybody. Um, I'm just not a pleasant person to be around. Um... And it's really hard when it's in that post phase, when I'm like in that three to four day mark, it just makes everything way worse. So if you start to notice any of these symptoms after your period ends and you're like, what the hell is wrong with me? And you start to wonder if you're literally just kind of like checking out, you're not checking out. It's a hormonal imbalance as well as your body's pretty much drained. Your body is pretty much just fighting to get back to normal. The only way to combat this is by taking care of yourself. So basically, rest. Like I said, I had a heavy cycle. If you've had a heavy cycle, you're not going to be up to par automatically. You're not just going to end your period and just go flying back into your regular life. Your body needs the nutrients and it needs to rehydrate. It needs to rebuild itself. It needs the building blocks in order to get itself back to where it used to be. Um, I know with me... I have postmenstrual anemia. Um, I usually will have to take iron, uh, iron supplements for a while. You can also take um, multivitamins. That helps me. I don't like to take iron supplements. Um, and I don't like to take um, vitamins because I sometimes will get like heart, heart palpitations as well as sometimes they make me get dizzy. So I don't really mess around with it too much. But the other obvious thing that you can do is just make sure you uptake your iron and your protein. Eggs, spinach anything, red meats, things like that. Water is a really important thing to do afterwards. It's really important to do before and during because you're losing water when you're on your cycle. Um, your cycle mostly is water, so that will cause you to get dehydrated. I learned this the hard way. I'm dehydrated right now. I've been drinking tea and water today. 
I ended up getting really, really dry, chapped lips. Um, just not feeling well. Started to just get kind of like out there. Um, like I said, no energy, really fatigued, really sluggish, um, lots of anxiety. And the reason why you get a lot of anxiety when you're dehydrated is because your brain's not able to work at its full capacity. Our base, our, our brains need water. And without it, you just don't do as well. The other obvious thing is that you're going to have it. You're going to have all these symptoms until your body is ready and where your body is ready and it's strong enough to get back to where it used to be. Unfortunately for me, that usually doesn't happen until I'm in my PMS phase. I'm usually just about to enter PMS and they start to start to feel normal again. And the crappy part is it'll cycle right back and then I'm right back where I started again. So that's the shitty part about being a woman is that we are constantly in this cycle and we're always constantly battling with our bodies to... Um, we get it up to par and we'll start to get it where it needs to be. And then our periods come and drop us back down and then we get it right back up to par again. And it's just a never ending cycle of battling with our bodies. But the thing is, is that I've come to learn over time is that you can either resist it and you can fight it and drive yourself insane, or you can give your body and your mind some grace and realize that not every cycle every month is going to be easy. Um, this past cycle for me was really hard. It was very hard in my body. And I do have a lot of personal things that I'm going through right now. And that doesn't help. It makes things worse. Your serotonin levels are really low during your postmenstrual. And I really just had to give my mind and my body grace that... It's going to take time, and it does take time. Not every cycle you're going to just jump right back into it. Now, last month, during my feel like phase, I was great. I was flying. I was flying. I was literally just at my work. I was just going all over the place. I was doing everything. I was on my A game. Um, no problems whatsoever. Just feeling good. But then my PMS came, my, po my pre menstrual that was bad and I ended up really really having to push through that and I had to push through a lot of issues to continue working my job has been really flaky too for the past couple of weeks I've been taking and getting a lot of call-offs um, my my boss has been calling me off like every weekend I'll get ready for work get my scrubs on get ready to walk out the door and she'll call me and say I don't need you today um, you can just stay home. I don't really know where my job is right now. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with my job. And I think with that combined with my post-menstrual symptoms right now, it's just not good. Like, it's they're both just kind of colliding. Um, so, kind of going through it right now. Um, and, so yeah. I am getting a kitten today. I'm getting another cat. I probably shouldn't, but I found the cutest little kitten. He's orange and white, and he's really sweet. I probably shouldn't be doing this because I'm probably going to end up making a huge mistake. Um, but our cat that we have now, she's black. She's a female. Um, she's going to be one next month, and she's been getting kind of violent lately. She's been attacking my oldest son. And she's been getting kind of bitchy. So I think she's going to be um, transferring to an indoor-outdoor cat. Where she'll just be like in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with her. But um, regardless, I'm going to have two cats. And um, I know everybody's probably thinking the same. Like, why would you get a male cat with a female? But um, I'm getting him fixed. I'm getting my male fixed. He's getting fixed in May or June. Um, and then she's going to be just, you know, she'll probably just be doing, what she might not go outside. I might not let her out, um, because she is not fixed. So I really don't want to let her go outside because she's, 
she's gonna find a boyfriend and then she's gonna get pregnant and then she's gonna come home and she's gonna bring the babies with her and it's like I have like a ton of kittens and I don't want to take care of watch kittens so um I don't know what I'm doing so I don't know but um I think when my male gets older he might end up going outside he might be an indoor outdoor cat because males obviously can't get pregnant but um I might just let him go and be an indoor outdoor cat because my female she um she's kind of an idiot and I'm afraid that she's going to like just run away and I know that males they always tend to come back um they like to be with their mamas females don't females are just like and they just kind of just take off so but anyways I don't know what I'm gonna do I don't know. But that's my life right now. That's what the season I'm in right now. We are about to, this Thursday coming up, we're entering our winter phase. We're getting ready to go into winter. I'm so excited for winter to get here. I am done with autumn. I have been done with it for weeks now. I'm ready to move on to the next phase. And um, we're one step closer to spring. So we literally, I just got to get through winter and then we're on spring. So back to warm weather back to beach that'll be my that'll that'll be my still me going like that um all right so that is it that's all I wanted to talk about if you feel like you're just losing your mind and your period's already ended and you're like this is just me I'm insane no they're not they're they're learning so much about the woman's body nowadays that there are things that we don't even they can't even figure out about us they they are just they're, they continue to keep learning new stuff and they're learning new stuff and they just keep doing it so, peace out, you guys, and thank you for watching.